What's going on YouTube? Clay he's all back again with another Final Fantasy Brave Exvius video and that's right Kingdom Hearts 3 is finally here. I am so excited. I got I, I've been through the video I know the units like the back of my hand and we have some great updates concerning Envy shards the Envy dungeon and all of that in the Q&A corner from the official video So without further ado, let's get into it So we have a ton to talk about in this video, guys, but before we do, I need to bring up the sponsor, Amazon Coins. Click the link in the description below. It helps me out a lot. I know you guys are going to be summoning, so just click the link in the description below if you're going to be using Amazon Coins. Get up to 20% off your coin purchases when you're going for these amazing units, because let me tell you, they are very, very good, and their STMRs and Vision Cards are outstanding and will stand the test of time. It's a very good time to summon, so why not help me out by using my sponsor in the link down below. I really appreciate that, uh, if you guys could use that link. So, anyway, that's right. Kingdom Hearts Dark road which is a kingdom hearts union cross uh collaboration that's going on with uh with ffb right now it has just been announced via the uh khux uh twitter and then also we just had the official ffb video come out we are going to be getting young xehanort and that's kind of the story of the dark road in khux uh or khux however they want to say it. you know i didn't i don't play the game too often uh is it really follows young xehanort and if you're a big fan of the story that's really where you're going to get a lot of his backstory and how he grew up and we kind of see a little bit a uh, bit of that in kingdom hearts three but looking at his unit this is the free unit we're going to be able to get from the event and he's pretty cool uh nothing too dazzling in my opinion where you really need to get a hold of it obviously getting the tmr and the stmr are great to have in your uh repertoire and your in your material box and your equipment box but the unit itself really is out there trying to do damage and i don't really see him as being somebody you should really go for and like you have to have because he has this niche use but if you guys see any different maybe i'm just uh, a little testy with young xehanort i need to look into him a little bit more maybe but when i gave him a glance it didn't seem like he was too amazing to me Moving on, though, talking about somebody that is amazing, it's my main man, Sora. He is freaking stellar, guys. He is the new Tifa, and I'm talking higher damage than Tifa by a lot. He's going to be uh, focused primarily on light damage because his LB, you know how Tifa buffs up. Uh, Sora's going to do that as well. Uh, Sora can buff up. He can get ready to go, and he smacks. He does AMOE chaining, Absolute Mirror of Equity, and his LB chains. It's not a finisher one hit like Tifa. It'll actually chain, so you're going to be able to chain it up. He has the ability to go true dual wield or true double hand, but you want to go true dual wield. He's going to be easier to build than Tifa. He's just extremely powerful. He's going to be doing a ton of damage, and a lot of these clears you guys can look up from the JP version include Sora in them because he's just insane. Again, I would really look at Sora when you're thinking about debating, like, you know, how, uh, you know, if you should pull for Sora, what kind of unit he is. I'm talking about he is Tifa, but the light damage dealing, chaining version of Tifa that does a ton more damage. He's going to be great. Uh, but, it, you know, how this game goes, you know, I got, I got to temper down my little, uh, my excitement a little bit. Uh, for the people out there that want just a straight answer, Sora will be at the top of the damage charts a lot. But with the introduction of Ibarra, and then as we move forward, a lot of different units will come out. And they'll eventually top him, and they have uh, things in the JP version of the game uh, currently that do buff up other NVs like kind of like unit awakenings that we had with the seven stars and the five star bases so again it's a damage dealer take it uh, for or leave it for what it is but uh thing you cannot take or leave for what it is is going to be his STMR guys this thing is insane it is a boost attack by 80% and boost LB damage by 75% from what I can remember with it if I'm wrong with that number I'm so sorry but I'm pretty sure it's 75% sorry about that little break right there I just wanted to confirm that it was 75% LB damage and it was and if it was just written here instead of me having to go to unreliable sources on the wiki we could see that i see the 80 percent but let's get over that for a minute this stmr is amazing astronomically insane 80 percent attack and 75 percent lb damage in one materia it's, 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 it's the best thing you can get a hold of, in my opinion, for LB damage dealers. It's sick, it's nasty, it's gross, it's amazing, cannot stack. So be aware, it cannot stack. Um, so if you end up finding yourself with two Soras, and you know how you go to the uh, EX plus two, you get the STMR Moogle specific for him. If you have some banked up, I would consider getting two of these STMRs. It is that good, it is that amazing, you want to get your hands on it. Now looking at Oathkeeper, Attack 170, Magic 62, this is only going to be usable on Sora. Now it can be used on the old Sora and the new one, which is kind of cool keeping up with that lore there activate keyblade of light boost equipment attack when uh, only weapons are equipped in one or both hands 
So again, it's you know it's gonna be good for Sora. Nine times out of ten, you might be using some other sword to try to get killers or something like that uh, with Sora. But it's a heck of a sword for him. So there's not really much to talk about that, right? Like you can't use it for anybody else. You throw it on Sora, it's good. That's it. That's how it's gonna be. Uh, moving on, I do think we get to look at his vision card. I really hope they go over his abilities, which I've already given you guys a brief description of. Look at the vision card real quick, okay? It has the attack 100 when it gets all the way maxed out. It's attack 60% normally. Boost attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 20%. So that's gonna be up to an 80% boost uh, and, and requires nothing. You don't have to have a fist weapon. You don't have to have a sword or a great sword. You just have to be, uh, well, it's only 60% if you don't, if you're not a Kingdom Hearts unit. So let me, let me tag that back a little bit. And then it gives you a bunch of elements or resist. So the, uh, it, it's the Keyblade Graveyard Battle, which was a sick, uh, memorable battle in Kingdom Hearts 3. Loved it to death. So very, very strong, um, vision card, but it's not going to be as strong as Riku's in my opinion. I think Riku's is going to be a bit stronger, but that STMR is nasty. So we go over to Riku. Riku's awesome coming in. He's going to be the second best unit on this banner, in my opinion, and he's going to kind of be like a 2B-esque unit. You remember 2B? Where she, bro she breaks, she does a lot of damage. He's going to be in dark damage, though, uh, and he's going to rival Sora kind of in damage, but not really be able to catch up to the old protagonist there. He tries his best but he doesn't make it there the one true keyblade master um is here i like his design but i don't like that he just raises his uh keyblade up when he is in his uh brave shift form if we remember looking over at sora really quick he actually transforms this whole thing into the master form over there so that is going to be like a really cool transformation right it looks like a I wouldn't say it a totally different unit because it is Sora, but he looks different, right? Whereas uh, if we look over here at our boy Riku, he just kind of raises his sword up. So that's a little bit strange. But again, if you want to low down on Riku, he is going to have an amazing TMR, okay? So his TMR and STMR are also very good, but his TMR is excellent. It's going to be attack 50, and it's going to give you guys boost LB damage. Think about a huge LB damage with huge attack mod on an accessory. Again, like I said, even if the Kingdom Hearts units, which they are astonishing at damage dealing, they're all three damage dealers, um, well... Kyrie's kind of falling behind on the wayside. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, you, the TMRs and SCMRs are just making the banner worth it anyway. And thank God we're going to learn in a little bit that we do have the good old uh, the good old pity system. So insane TMR. I want multiple of these if I can get a hold of them. I really, really love them. Uh, and I wish this was a raid so we could get some raid moogles so I could get even more of Riku's glove. But I think strategically they made this like a King Mog of it. <laughs> See, uh, the SCMR is Guardian of Light, boost attack by 80%, and boost equipment and attack when only weapons are equipped in one or both hands. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, true double hand, or true double hand, yeah, excuse me, boost attack by 80%. Not as good as Sora's, but still pretty dang good anyway, and something you might want to pick up. But I wouldn't be wasting an STMR move on him if you had two copies, but that's just me. Maybe you guys would like to do that. Moving on to his uh, Facing the Demon Tower, which is another sick moment in uh, Kingdom Hearts. We can see that this card actually gives us 110 attack when all the way maxed out. And then if you have a sword on, it's going to give you the 80%, whereas Sora's was only 60%. But this requires you to have a sword. You know, it does require a little bit of a weapon there. And then we boost attack by 20% and boost that LB damage on a uh, vision card right here. So you're getting a ton of attack, especially if you're Sora. You're looking at the 100% attack up because you will be putting a sword in his hand when you're true dual wielding him. By the way, I think you should tr true dual wield probably both these units. Riku maybe for true double hand, but uh, Sora for sure true dual wield. Makes him easy to build, lets him get a bunch of killers. Let's them unleash that damage. Um, and then we get the uh, boost LB damage on this, which is sick. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very niche, actually, seeing that LB damage on a vision card, you know. Next up, we have Kyrie, which uh, she is a uh, cool unit uh, in and of herself. But sadly, she just doesn't bring the damage. She actually brings less damage than her NVA last well that we've just seen come out a few months ago. Or maybe it was like a month ago. I'm losing my days here with everything coming out. But she actually does less damage than that. She's a spirit scaling damage dealer that really just doesn't pack the punch that we really hope so. I was actually looking in here to see her get a little bit of a buff. Turns out she didn't get that. Maybe because she'll just sell because she looks cool. She looks amazing. Looking at her TMR, you get her dress, attack 33, defense 22, spirit 40, and activate if you're a female, boost attack and spirit by 50%. So uh, that's pretty sick if you're going to put it on a female unit, but it is niche to that uh, you know side of being a female, and all your male characters won't be able to use it. So I'll give it, you know, it's a good rating, but because of that, it cuts off like a bunch of the characters, sadly. Her uh, STMR is Guardian of Light, which is insane. Boost attack, spirit, and dark resist by 70% and restore MP and fill LB every turn. An insane STMR to go along with the other insane STMRs. I would rank them Sora's the best, then Kyrie's, and then Riku's right after that. This thing right here is ins If you go again, I keep saying the word insane, but it's bonkers. Uh, it just the, 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 These raw stats on this bad boy along with the other effects are just really, really good. But sadly, again, I have to say that Kyrie herself just isn't the best unit in the world. When she brave shifts, she brings a little bit of like... Uh, 
a little bit of the support, but not very much. I think she boosts light damage by like 25%, which is really cool, right? Like light and physical damage by 25%. Great for Sora. Can help with a lot of those one-shotting things you try to do. But other than that, she's just not going to be the best. If we look at her... Uh, the Palpu Fruits Bond, we have level 10, attack 72, spirit 88, so it's really going along with that, you know, you know, I want to attack and spirit, you know, when the spirit damage dealers with attack there, boost attack and spirit 20, attack and spirit 20, boost attack and spirit by 30%, and light resist by 50%. This card right here, in my opinion, strictly going to be used on Kyrie and really not that great, so Kyrie, again, I, I, I don't, I hate to say somebody's the booby prize of the banner because they look so cool, they're awesome. I don't know how I feel about the round bubble behind them like X-Death has, but I'll get over that. Uh, it, it would be Kyrie's the booby prize, the one I would choose. Uh, moving on, they go to discuss that we are getting some big buffs to Sora, Riku, Sephiroth, Kingdom Hearts, and Cloud Kingdom Hearts, and this comes in aw uh, Ability Awakenings. They talk about how, remember, Riku and Sephiroth were both nerfed pre-release because, you know, it messed up the global side of the game, yeah. Uh, so they're going to buff them up to where uh, they're a little bit more powerful, and we're going to see some different global changes than what they have in JP. So expect them to be a little bit more powerful, but I'm not sure how high they're going to make them up. We're going to have to wait and see. Without NVAs or something like that, I just don't see them competing. Uh, in the current meta, but hopefully I'm wrong. I would love to be wrong. And here's where the big news comes in and gets me so excited, okay? The banners are perfect, in my opinion. You guys can fight me on it if you want. I want to hear it in the comments below. I want to hear what you say. Please comment right now. Each banner, so there's three NVs. So first off, you're probably shitting your pants. There's three NVs. Uh, there's a lot to cover here, but you get to choose the banner that you want to focus on for the unit. So what that means is they'll have three banners, each with rate ups only to the featured unit that you want to choose. So for this one, only Sora is rated up. The other two will be in there. They're in the pool, but only Sora is rated up. Same for Riku, same for Kyrie here at the bottom. That's great. You get to pick and choose where you want to be spinning your lapis. Next up. Every three summons gets you a free one. I love that one. I even love that one better than the rainbow one. I, I think it's the better one. And on top of all of that, we do get the pity, thank God, where we can exchange our summoning coins, 10 of them, for a featured NV unit, which get, gets us there and gets us the unit that we wanted from the limited time banner. Mwah. I, that's what I want. That's what I wanted to see. Now, if they throw in a little bit of the stupid panel summons, too, just to give us a little icing on the cake, I'd like that. Uh, but this is uh, more, I mean, obviously, you know, they could just give us the units for free. But, you know, when it comes to, like, thinking realistically, this is really what I wanted to see. And I'm very excited about it. And I, when I saw it, I was like, dude, I was like, yes, they're not, they're not fucking us over. Because <laughs> they definitely could. All right. Here comes some information that uh, you guys are probably really looking forward to. This is going to be where he talks about the, uh, I'm going to skip through it until I get to this part. Because I need to be able to remember the name of this. Because I don't remember the name exactly of uh the uh the event they're going to be holding but essentially the daily dungeon is coming right so we were all looking for the daily dungeon for nv shards um and you know it's been a thing in jp and it took a while to get to global it's going to be a bit different in global the NV uh, Daily Dungeon will be a timed event, kind of like Item World, that they'll bring out every two to three months, he said. So it's not going to be as uh, as frequent as Item World will be. You can farm it for up to two weeks, which means uh, a total of 14 days. When you go into this dungeon, every NV unit you bring, and you can't bring multiple, like you can't bring two Starlight Atlantas, they have to be NVs, and they have to be NV Awakened already. So they have to either already be an NV or already be NV Awakened, and it has to be all different units. You know, double units won't count. Uh, you can bring them, I think, but it won't give you extra shards. Anyway, everybody you bring in there will give you five shards for every time you run it every single day. So that is the first way they're going to be able to get you guys your shards that you need for these units. So again, you bring a, t a team entirely full of NVA and NV units that are all different. When you complete that mission, you will be getting five shards for each of those units. He does specify that you will be able to take non-NV units into this fight, but why would you ever do that? Because you would be missing out on shards. How do I feel about it? I think it's awesome. Uh, you can get, I think, up to 70, right? Uh, 70 shards uh, here if you farm it every single day for a specific unit, which is pretty good. Should be enough to be able to Envy Awakened or, you know, EX plus one or something like that, or at least get you on the track to EX plus two. I hope it's every two months and not every three months. As he said, I don't know how different he's going to be with this, uh, but it's a very, very cool thing that he's adding, and I'm glad they at least talked about it. And if you want to know more detail than what even I just said, it's probably going to be in the game later, uh, but you will be able to... Um, Read, read him because he speaks in Japanese here. You have to read the subtitle. So the next thing they're going to bring out is the monthly fortune hunt. This is going to be a way for you guys to get your hands on VIP coins. Then when you don't spend on lapis. So he's going to bring a way to where you guys can get your hands on VIP coins when you're not a spender. So like, you know, I buy lapis. It's in the EX point system. I get VIP coins. But if you remember from the fourth year anniversary, they did speak about how everybody's going to have their chance at VIP coins. Apparently they're going to give them out in login bonuses, some events. And now this monthly fortune hunt, which is going to be like a 
a uh, probably like a new King Mog Elemental Battle kind of thing. They'll do monthly, uh, and that's where you can get VIP coins. And with those VIP coins, they're going to put all of the units. From what I understand, all of the units shards into the VIP shop for you guys to purchase, uh, and along with the uh, ability to buy them with lapis is what he talks about here a little later on. So we're, everybody's going to get their hands on v VIP points now and coins to be able to build up to go towards those. Uh, then they're also going to be able to buy them with lapis. However, I just don't feel the lapis is really uh, the greatest deal in the world. Personally, for me, new NV units, 10 fragments for 1,100 lapis. Uh, you know, it wasn't the deal 5,000 for 50 before, so it's a little bit more than what it was with that deal while they're there. But I guess that... Um, you know, it says only up to three purchases allowed for each, too. So this is going to be a weird system we're going to have to look at when it actually gets implemented. Uh, but I don't think it's really that great, uh, personally. But maybe it's there to, like, allow you to catch up and so you're, you don't feel like the Envy unit's a total waste. If you cannot EX plus one or you cannot Envy Awakened and stuff like that, you can get the shards here this way. That's my least favorite way. You know, the VIP coins are cool. Everybody's going to get them now and feel like a VIP. And then the best way, obviously, is going to be that uh, Fragment Dungeon that you guys are going to be able to do daily for the two weeks that it actually is out. So it's going to be a little weird, but hey, we'll catch up to it uh, and catch on to it pretty soon. Moving on, I want to talk about they are doing a kingdom. There's a ton of stuff going with this event. They're giving us a guaranteed unit summon where we are guaranteed one Kingdom Hearts unit with this. Now, I don't know how many of these we're going to be able to get, but it says tickets available via Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Uh, and Dark Road login bonuses. It says tickets. So we're going to get multiple of these? So we're going to get a guaranteed one of these units. They say the NVs are in there, but again, they don't have to release the rates of uh, special tickets. So who knows how many people are actually going to get NVs. The NVs are not guaranteed. It's guaranteed to be one of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven units. Uh, it looks like here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Am I missing anybody? No, that seems good. Okay, cool. So that's awesome on its own. But then they go even further beyond. They talk about how we're going to get freely, free daily 10 summons every day for two weeks and they have the 10 percent rate for five star and nv i don't know what the nv rate is but you know it's a combined rate i guess for the five star and nv now i thought in the past that these were so rigged that you wouldn't even be able to believe it right because they can do that because you're not spending money on it or whatever uh but remember those free summons we got where it was guaranteed to be an envy or a rainbow i saw a lot of people getting an nv out of those and it really changed my mind about what they do with these rates. Now, not to say this one isn't super rigged or the other one wasn't and people were just getting lucky, but it really opened my eyes to think, wow, this is possible to get MVs. Uh, and I know not everybody got them, so that kind of sucks, but that's the luck factor. But it's not as rigged as I once thought, at least for that banner. So I'm hoping this one is kind of similar. Uh, and then they go on to talk about the actual collaboration. So they want people playing FFB. They want people playing Dark Road. That's the whole point to bring the people together and have them do that. So, uh, I look forward to that and everybody playing Dark Road. I hope you guys can help us out with getting our rewards and hope we can help you guys out with getting yours. But overall, guys, I could not be more excited. Thursday night, ooh, it's going to be a big summon session. I haven't done one of those in a while. I'm going to be I'm going to be fragging out, dude. I want Sword EX2 at least, at least. And I did not mention that they are talking about I uh, I think they're going to be giving 50 shards out for these uh these limited time units, these uh these Kingdom Hearts units, you know, from the logins. Because they talked about how you know, people weren't happy with the way their login rewards were, the, the numbers. Uh, Fujimoto-san talks about that when he talks about the dungeon. And it seems like, and even Shali hints at at the end, that we will be getting different numbers for limited time collabs from time to time. So hopefully it's 50 for Sora and it makes it that much easier for me to get it maxed out and you guys. So best of luck to you guys if you summon and I don't see you again and you don't show up to the stream, but I really want you there. And I just couldn't be more excited about the Kingdom Hearts stuff and the, uh, the Envy changes and all these freebies they're giving out. This seems like an event... That is worth celebrating and being excited about. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if, how you feel about the Kingdom Hearts banners and how you feel about all this stuff. Because I want to hear from you guys about how if you think it's good enough. The envy changes. You know, I want to hear the community's thoughts on that uh, as well as, you know, can compare to mine. Uh, subscribe for future content. Catch me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash We're going to do some hype summons. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.